Well, 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 it is the big broadcast. We are coast to coast and border to border on iHeartRadio. AMFM 247.com. Tune in, iTunes. Of course, AMFM 247, as I've mentioned. Brand new TV show. I did a few things this morning on that. I gotta find me some pirated software, though, so I can complete it. But, <laughs> let's talk about pirated software on the air. Fantastic. Uh, get a hold of us online. It is JiggyJaguar.com. And uh, that is your best spot to see what we are up to on this fabulous, fabulous day. And uh, Richard Kurtz from Strategies PR will join us here in just a few moments. Yes, that Richard Kurtz. He'll be with us to uh, chat with us on the old uh, on the old Skip Skype, the old Skype Rooney, as they say. I don't know who's saying the Skype Rooney anymore. It's me. It's me. The J I double G, as they say. And uh, what is going on here? I got all sorts of things happening as usual. Just circus, as they say. It's a circus. It's a damn circus. Joe Biden is the president. El Presidente. That guy, the war machine's back in charge. The adults are back in the room and the war machine is in charge, as they say. I don't know what they're saying. I don't know why they say it, but they are indeed saying it. Let's hope Richard brought the donuts or dollars to donuts or something. Something. Maybe Richard will be involved with the donuts. Maybe the donuts will be involved with Richard. I don't know. Can the donuts be involved with Richard? I don't know. I think the donuts will be involved with Richard. I think Richard will be the reason that we have the donuts. Did he make the donuts? That's what they're wanting to know. That's what they want to know. Did he make the donuts? I had, uh, who was it? Send me a... Nope. They calling me. They calling me. Well, hey, what's going on, sir? I got a couple questions for you. Okay, um, what's up? Number one, you do your show on Friday, right? Uh, no, I do it on... Back to Richard Kurtz and the debate. The big debate that I'm having with myself till he calls. Will he be involved with the donuts, or will the donuts be involved with Richard? I don't know. We're going to find out today. So, let's go to Richard Kurtz. Rich Kurtz, as they say. He's on the old Skype. He chatted with us 14 days ago. This was before the bombshell of the donuts. I don't know about the donuts. We're trying to figure it out. Will Richard be involved with the donuts or will the donuts be involved with Richard? Richard's not picking up. Richard's not picking up, so I don't know if the donuts got him. Did the donuts get Richard? That's the question. My question is, did Richard get the donuts or did Ri or did the donuts get Richard? That's the question. We'll find out. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> let's take a break. And at some point, Rich will call us. And we will figure out if the donuts are involved or if Richard's involved with the donuts. We will figure it out when we come back. Over. And we're going to go to Rich Kurtz and we're going to figure out the question. We are going to figure out the question today. Can Richard be involved with the donuts or will the donuts be involved with Richard? Anybody. That's the question. Richard, I can hear Richard, you. Can hear. Now, now I can hear you. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I was having a debate with myself before, which are always the best kind of debates because no one ever wins and no one ever loses. But, uh... 
Frank Catolo, my, my good close personal longtime friend, always has a phrase that he uses. Dollars to donuts and let's hope that, and then he puts in the name, they brought the donuts. So what I was going to say was dollars to donuts and let's hope Rich brought the donuts. I It then devolved into a debate of can Rich be involved with the donuts or will the donuts be involved with Richard? And I don't know if the donuts can be involved with you because... You would have to be involved with the donuts. So, well, I don't know. What I can tell you <laughs> empirically is okay. that Krispy Kreme donuts are overrated. <laughs> okay. And I am a fan and a shareholder in Dunkin' Donuts. That's awesome. <laughs> And, so you and, can and, be involved with the donuts. And there's a company that's attempting to Jesus. take over Dunkin' Donuts. And... I'm about oh, to really? get on the telephone with the legal office that's trying to keep them from buying it underpriced. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and that and that's a that's quite the coincidence. Um, the, this the problem, is amazing. The overall problem here is is I can no longer comfortably drink caffeinated coffee, which goes excellently with donuts. <laughs> but. We can go on from there, and I can go on and, oh and talk about God. how bad Starbucks is this for the is, world. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, thank you for humoring me. Also, <laughs> uh, thanks for breaking that news. I didn't know that Dunkin' Donuts was getting ready to be taken over by another group. Well, it's a tender offer, and they're always anything but tender. You know how that is. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Well, but besides donut talk, what do you what do you have for us today, Rich? <laughs> well, I was thinking, I was listening to uh, one of my favorite people, Rudy Giuliani, this morning, <laughs> and and, and oh, he Rudy. was going on about the what was functionally the opening statement for the uh, for the massive lawsuit that lawsuits that are taking place, and there's really only three of them, about this obnoxious excuse for an election. Um, and I listened to it, and I listened to it pretty carefully because I am really doing my damnedest to be unbiased in light of the fact that there suddenly became a strong possibility that we were going to have um, uh, Joe and and um, <laughs> and Kami. I'm trying to clean this up. Joe and Kami <laughs> as, our, as our president and vice president, um, and Kami is such a perfect word for her. Uh, anyway, um, and I'm trying to be unbiased, and I'm listening to this. I said, okay, pitch me, Rudy. Tell me what you got going on. I'm listening to the evidence. And what sh you got to understand that the the evidence and the emotionality is what makes for a, a, a trial at, at the level that this will go initially. Uh, and it reminded me of a conversation that I had with a former ADA in San Diego while I was, uh, while I was building a patio cover in his yard. <laughs> I yes. did tell you I was a carpenter. Yes, in indeed. Event, That's one of my favorite highlights from, from your yeah, one sheet. And, and, and anyway, this was the time of the famous OJ trial, which as you well know, um, uh, OJ functionally won and shouldn't have. Yeah. But I, I, I asked him, you know, what do you think? And the conversation was much more expansive but what it came down to is, is as a prosecutor, he wished he had the amount of evidence that they had against OJ in any one of the prosecutions that he did. <laughs> um, the, the, the evidence was just so overwhelming, and yet uh, the trial went the way that we know it did. Um, and uh, I was listening to this information about all the allegations of uh, voter fraud that have taken place. And I will conclude systematically uh, in so many places around the country. And I had to think mechanically, what does that mean? Um, and or what the jury bases their decisions on and the law is what they have to apply to the facts. Yes. Um, you know, yes. and the facts are what the jury chooses to believe. 
and what the judge allows them to hear. Uh, interesting, interesting blend of, uh, of factors that are going to affect this. This is the most god-awful situation I've ever seen in my life. So I went back to the money. $14 billion was openly spent on, on this election. Jesus. $14 billion. That's 14 pallets of $100 bills. <laughs> That's a lot of freaking money. Yes. And what they're looking at in reality is, okay, so per U.S. citizen, that's 42 bucks. Per vote, assuming that uh, 140 million votes were legitimate, but per vote, that's $100 a vote. That's disgusting. Yes. Uh, yes. Many years ago, my son's roommate's dad ran for Congress in Vermont. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of years ago because it's 30 years since he's been in college. And wow. uh, and he ran and he ran a campaign and his campaign ultimately didn't make it. But he spent $15 million at the yeah. same time, uh, $15,000. At the same time, if he were running for the same office in Orange County, California, he would have spent, you know, $1.5 million. Um, it is atrocious that that amount of money needs to be spent to communicate with American voters. And part of the problem is that we don't go by the adage that local politics, all politics is local. I don't feel it appropriate that in any given election, money should be coming from, money for campaigns should be coming for a source outside of that jurisdiction. Yeah. Um, yes, of course, money can come from all over the country to campaign for the president. It's a national office. But when you're campaigning for senator in Georgia, that money should come from Georgia, clearly. Yes. yes. Um, because that's where the vested interest is. And if the people can't pony up enough money to communicate with each other in, in a given state, well, so be it. Let the chips fall. But... This is asinine. And I'm, now I'm looking at that's $14 billion that was spent out in the open. God knows how many dollars were spent behind the scenes to get now that we're finding voting. Remember, you and I had this conversation months ago, and I said, you can't hack a paper ballot. Yes. <laughs> and and yes. You, you can't hack a paper ballot that's delivered by the person who fills out the ballot. Hi, I'm Jim Jones. This is my ballot. No, you can't see it. It's going in the box. Okay? That's a ballot. These machines that I told you there wasn't a machine out there that couldn't be hacked, not only have they been hacked, they've been manufactured and used to tally these votes in Germany by companies that are owned by people in Venezuela. Uh, the whole development of the software and the hardware that handles tallying the ballots uh, is out of this country. And I don't know how, how off the planet that concept is. It's it's just it's insane. It's and I'm listening to where we started this to the evidence as Rudy is spelling this out, and he's got these affidavits from people, and I'm thinking if there is time enough. This is going to be the first time in United States history where they're going to have to do a whole new election. You know, that, <laughs> that may end up happening. And there's going to have to be national rules for what is a vote. And there's going to have to be enforcement for people who play with the system, severe enforcement, immediate enforcement, expensive enforcement. And, uh, I mean, I listened to some alleged journalist online the other day threatening and doxing somebody who was in a, uh, in a position to validate the vote in a given area. I can't remember where it was or I'd put his name and address out. But, I will <laughs> later. but this guy was going on and saying, here's their names and here's where they live. And I want you to know that 
uh, 1.5 million people of color have been are about to be disenfranchised because of these two people. So they're basically like doing a Maxine Waters and calling all the lunatics to come out of the woodwork and harass these people. And this is so wrong on so many levels. Uh, I mean, it is ultimate thuggery, and it's out in the open. Uh, you know, at at least the mafia was quiet about it, and they didn't come and do violence at your house. You know, um, there's no ethics, and it's, you know, I'm at the point now where, you know, I'm 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 looking at a, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at getting a piece of land buried in the woods in southwest Georgia somewhere, where I can live out my next twenty years and not have to deal with maniacs. Uh, <laughs> No, no, no matter what happens, uh, I, it's it's frightening. It's frightening, uh, and I, you know, it is it, it just scares. It is just undermining the whole country. It, it's scary. I don't care who wins. I do care who wins, obviously. <laughs> but, but but I don't care who ultimately wins in a given political contest if the rules are in place. You know. You watch a basketball game, uh, halfway through the game, if the team is down by 40 points, do you think it's a good idea if they come out with bats? I don't think it's a good idea if they come out with baseball bats. I think that that undermines the game a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's what's happened here. They've, they've, they've undermined the game. Um, and... Uh, Kurt Russell, you know who Kurt Russell is, yes. married to, or living with Goldie Hawn. Yes. Uh, yeah. He came out today with one of the best expressions of uh, of the entertainment industry. I won't call them all Hollywood and heads because they're not, but he came out with one of the best expressions I've heard in a while. And it was, "We're just court jesters. We really don't have any business being politicking about anything." We're just the court jesters. We're the entertainers. And I think that's a, uh, well, I think that's a good point. You know, that's, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Rich, before we let you go, how do we, how, how do we get a hold of some of your writings and everything that you're involved in? Well, I'm on the way to putting up a, uh, putting up a website. I'm trying to get a movement to actually mobilize the 73 million people who they're attempting to disenfranchise um, to get them to just be aware of things. Um, and uh, and I have to tell you, when you when you see uh, when you see them coming down on uh, on the competitors that are moving up on Facebook and Twitter. Um, you know that they're doing the 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 competitors are doing the right thing. Um, but you can get a hold of me, uh, uh, obviously at Rich Kurtz, um, uh, at gmail dot com, or R Kurtz Media at gmail dot com, and uh, and I am going to get a website up, get some things out, and so far I've just been, um. Alligator wrestling with the uh, with the stock market during the day, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and and trying to stay in communication with my with my grandchildren and extended family the rest of the time. It's uh, this COVID thing is probably the most politicized disorder since uh, since HIV. Yes, uh, yes. and. Uh, this one is fully manufactured. A good, a good friend of my family, who's a biochemist, said that this thing is manufactured. It, this is too good a virus to have just developed naturally. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's scary. This is scary stuff. This is this is really really bad cheating when you physically threaten people's families so that the attorneys back out of cases. Um, this is. You can't write this shit. No. <laughs> you know? No. You just no. You just can't make this stuff up <laughs> any better than that. And, and I know a lot of good writers. And, 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 and yes, I got to tell do. you, um, 
they're going to take a second seat to this whole story. <laughs> well, Ranch, I appreciate you making time. Have yourself a happy Thanksgiving, and I will talk to you here in December. I am going to have all the traditional things that we've been having for 50 years, and I'm going to love every bit of it. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. I will talk to you soon. Thank you, Rich. My best to you and yours and stay healthy. Thank you, my friend. There he goes, Rich Kurtz. Strategies PR, La Jolla Writers Conference, and uh, we are going to take a brief time out. When we come back, we have got more. It is the big broadcast. We got more coming up on the other side.